welcome along to Nailtopia, Inside with the Insiders. I'm Rachel. In this podcast, we're going to talk to some of the nail industry's biggest and brightest. But I want to get to know the real them. I want to know their real stories. So come with me as we take a peek behind the curtain. So today I'm with the absolutely fabulous Danny Simmons. Hi, Danny. Please tell us who you are and what you do. Okay. Um, well, that's a good plan itself. Um, okay, so I'm Danny. Um, I have a few hats, I suppose. Um, I own um, a couple of brands. I distribute for quite a few brands um, under my umbrella company, which is Nail and Beauty Network. I'm also head of education for Nail and Beauty Network Education. I'm a nail technician, I'm an educator, I'm a mum, um, <laughs> player when I'm not doing work and yeah, just a um, bit of everything really. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, nutshell. Uh, so let's talk about how you ended up in the nail industry because I know you've had a few, you've wore a few other hats before. So let's let's talk about yeah. um, how, how we managed to get the roundabout to turn off to nail technician. <laughs> so um, when I was at school, I always wanted to be... Um, I always wanted to be an Egyptologist and my mum was adamant that it wasn't necessarily the right career path. Wanted me to look at something like law and things like that. So I'm not even going to lie. When I did my options for college, I picked a BTEC beauty therapy course to wind my mum up. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And that was in 2003. And um, I did my BTEC and at the same time trained in nails, which is when CND was creative. So yeah, quite a while back, um, gel polish didn't exist. Coloured acrylic didn't exist. Um, and I loved it. I have children in the background, so sorry Yeah, about that. that's fine. We'll, um, um, we'll do like what we always do. We'll just uh, plough on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I trained in nails as well as a lot of other um, elements of beauty. And then I decided when I was 17 or 18 that it wasn't necessarily the right... Um, it wasn't the right career move for me. So then I went on, to, uh, I did like temp and admin and stuff and that until mm-hmm. I kind of found what I wanted to do. Um, I worked with a local... Um, so it was before social services and the NHS was kind of separate and when they amalgamated um I was working for them and doing like care brokering so I was um I was literally contracting care for the elderly and the people in hospital or people at home um and doing things like that so a lot of liaisons with lots of like healthcare professionals and 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 things like that and I did that for a little while then ended up going to Leeds moved to Leeds and worked with occupational therapists in the five hospitals up there wow and then moved to London, <laughs> just moved around everywhere. Um, and I was watching telly one day and I was like, I could do that. And my partner at the time was like, do what? And Gordon Ramsay was on the telly. I was like, I could work for him. And he <laughs> laughed. So then I got a job with him. <laughs> so yeah, Listen, if you're going to prove Ramsay. somebody wrong, you aim high. <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah. So I um, worked with Gordon Ramsay for two years and that was the start of my kind of hospitality career. Did that for 12 years. Um in lots of different places ended up in Dubai for a couple of years wow. um, opening restaurants doing some international events and stuff I worked on the 2012 Olympics like wow. um, yeah I, I did um, senior hospitality operations management so we um essentially looked after a lot of the teams we shipped over the Olympic Museum from Switzerland and Ooh. put it into the Royal Opera House and turned it into a massive exhibit um so you're yeah, good at juggling things. you're good at juggling then I would yes. say yeah <laughs> Yes. And like I ended up in Dubai and then I came home and I was like, OK, I feel like I'm ready to settle down. Don't really know what to do next. So my parents, I lived in pubs since I was six as well. So I was naturally yeah. already. Drawn Me to too. Um, I loved it. It was the best yeah. life, honestly. If anyone can't do it, it's hard work, but it's worth it. Um, but then at that point, I realised there was actually one thing that I always kept. And it was always my nail kit. To this day, I've still got my creative powders from wow. my course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that was um, 2015, 2016. And I was like, okay, there's this obviously a reason I've kept them. Like, yeah. it's a long time. A long um, time. So I did a refresher course. <laughs> yeah, I did a refresher course. And at the same time, I fell pregnant with my eldest son. Um, so Ooh. it was a natural transition, really. And then I thought, oh, I'll do some nails to kind of, um, you know, tide me over and whatnot. And then I ended up making a group on Facebook, the Nail Tech Network. And originally, mm. it was only meant for people like locally, because yeah. I couldn't really find anywhere to talk to people. And then within a couple of months, people up and down the country wanted to join. And within six months, it was international. And yeah, yeah the rest it's is a history. Brill- it's a brilliant resource um, as well. I, it's, I mean, it's it's where I first found you just before COVID. And some of the, you know, during the COVID times, that was the place we were all going. We we're all coming to you because you seem to be listening out a little bit better than the rest of us. 
or a fry in. Like the thing is, is like as as with anything, it's so sometimes you can have a lot of information thrown in your face uh -huh. and it's literally like white noise. If it doesn't make sense, yeah. then you know you're gonna feel overwhelmed, you're gonna feel upset. And I just the thought of our industry or people in our industry feeling that way, it just broke me. So I was like, no, mm. I need to try and help as best as I can. And yeah. having worked with like lots of contracts and stuff, like I've got quite a lot of wording experience. Um I talk a lot, so that also is a bit more <laughs> wording experience. Another but, um, thing we've got in common like, there. <laughs> absolutely. Let's see, this is why we get on. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we've got like I, I just, you know, I, I couldn't just not do something. I couldn't. Yeah. I, I just I needed to, to you know uh, a lot of people reached out to me on inboxes and stuff and then we started the um business support group that we've got going mm. as well and I asked them the other day actually I was like obviously COVID's pretty much over do you still want the group as a resource or do you want me to close it and everyone unanimously was mm. like no we want to keep it this is a really helpful group so um yeah just it, yeah. The pilot group. <laughs> yeah so so COVID wasn't as uh it wasn't as a bigger dip for you as uh, because you still got a focus um did you find it, yeah. yeah did you did you find that that really helped you being able to still connect mentally yes yeah. like I suffer from extreme anxiety and depression yeah. um a lot of people don't know that and obviously I come across quite bubbly but yeah I think sometimes it's, it's the um, ones because I, I also suffer really badly with depression I have all my life um and I think People always say, oh, but you're always so bubbly. I really think we cover, us with, with it quite badly. Yeah. We're better at covering it than, if you actually see somebody sad, they're probably not, you know, if they if they constantly look sad, they're probably all right inside. <laughs> it's yeah. us that are constantly like, yeah, going, old age When people say if people are injured, the one that's not making the noise is the one that needs the attention first. Yes, yeah, um, exactly, exactly. So yeah, it was, it was a great resource during COVID. Um, yeah, so, it was really so let's talk about like you say your umbrella companies let's talk about nail tech network how did when did you sort of come up with that idea and what was the thought behind it so the so when i started the original group nail tech network um it got to a point where it was almost becoming a full-time job i literally was like i was trying my best to help people had an amazing team that were like you know working along us as well and you know trying to just answer as many people and make sure people realize that no question is stupid ask that question because you know there's a massive difference between asking a question and making a mistake yeah um so you know we wanted to be there and it's like we almost used the group as like a staff room so it's like the staff room for the lone worker yeah um and it just got to a point where it was taking up so much of my time. I had the choice of either looking at a way of, you know, turning it into some kind of um, business opportunity mm. or, um, or you know, having to, like, slow it down and, and you know, just kind of do things yeah. when I could around having a job. And being a new mum as well, like, it was really quite stressful. Um, so um, I decided I took, I had a personal credit card with like a thousand pound limit on it and I bought some products. Yeah. And it kind of went from there it's been like yeah it's been it's been a huge whirlwind there's been a lot of ups and downs um with it definitely but um I feel like it stands for something which is a bit more important now which yeah. is great because like people just see it as somewhere you can buy and sell stuff like um you know we do have the um like the sales pages and stuff as well so people can like you know share on their professional products and know they're going to professional people mm. um but it's, it's also like you know if people do feel like they need to reach out or they need advice with a client or you know they just need a bit of a pep talk then, yeah. you know they know that they can come there as well and I think that's really important because um social media is full of and filters and everything else and I think sometimes people don't necessarily share the nitty-gritty and that's what people sometimes really need to see and hear exactly oh one of so you know I'd like to think that you know that's definitely what we've become there's yeah. been an evolution I would sure. say I would so. say that that's what it feels like from from my outside perspective yeah so what are you wanting to do with with, with it all where it where's your brain taking it next um I'm and then actually, you joked with um, me the other day didn't you about starting a trade show and I'm like nope Danny you can't yeah. do that I'll come to you <laughs> no I think I get shot um because the girls already were like Danny you need to stop <laughs> with all the ideas like I literally hatch about 20 ideas a day oh god like, we, oh, we, can do this, we can do that we really are twinning yeah, today I burst through my salon it's, doors it's at least twice a week and go I've had an idea and the girls got off oh, and crying out loud <laughs> Not again yeah. <laughs> but no I am um, what I want to do is that I have to start focusing on the business a bit more now like things have um things have definitely tapered off I mean to be quite candid um 
like from my perspective the success of my business has definitely decreased since covid mm -hmm. so i need to focus on you know bringing that back um i mean it's not something that you really expect people to say but you know i'd rather be honest yeah. i've always been honest yeah um you know things have definitely taken a bit of a, a dip and so that tells me that my focus hasn't been necessarily in the right direction um and and my team have been working really really hard so it's about um my next kind of six to 12 months mm. specifically we will focused on we're gonna um we are intending to rebrand and rename the company not the groups yes um yeah. so that we've got uh, bigger appeal we've got our acrylic system which launched in april and mm. and we're um we're looking at pushing that that's been doing really well people have been, we've been getting amazing feedback um which we're really proud of so um there's that and just you know trying to make sure that people understand that you know we're we're here we're not just here to sell either you know we're yeah. here for for the individual and i think that's what makes us slightly different yeah um yeah. from a lot of uh, our companies but um you know it just kind of the focus of what we're trying to do needs to just be realigned because we went obviously for such a turbulent time mm. there is an element of self-preservation that everybody would need to have but now we're trying to get back to normal street you know we can start having a bit more business as usual so do, do you feel yeah. that as an, as an industry we 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 kind of gravitate more to the what can i do for others rather than what can i do for myself you found that because I, um, I find i my husband will say to me a lot like you're pushing yourself you're not thinking about yourself you're thinking about others too much do you find as an industry that tends to be I think I would I think collectively yeah there's a there's a I think there's a big section of people that do I think there's almost like slices mm -hmm. I think if you look at it like a cake I think there's definitely a oh, big yeah, slice yeah. of that cake that does that um and and I think it's fantastic but I think that we also need to remember that you know and this is something I'm trying to learn personally <laughs> and, and we don't look after ourselves yeah. like you know you're not going to be able to look after people to the best of your abilities yeah. so you've got to start it at home yeah. um and that's something i'm definitely trying to look at um and you know do at home so there's like a lot of kind of self-care things i've been bringing into my home mm. um to make sure that you know i'm feeling a bit more um i've been bringing wine in <laughs> i've been bringing Love a lot it. more wine like in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well i've got the gym um, yeah. <laughs> but like like really little things like I've been doing my nails and yeah and you know I'm, uh, I'm giving myself a lash lift this week and and things like that and it's like I'm going to the bath I'm having like Epsom salts and things like that I'm having yeah. a nice bath it's like yeah. really small things that people take for granted but I think um you know things like this are really 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 important and and in an industry that's based on you know that, that if there's a focus on image of course there is mm. um you know if we're not feeling our best we're not looking our best and, exactly. and that's you know also very important to be able yeah. to portray the best way to our, our clientele and and to those who are all, there are going to be people stood in the wings judging they always will and you know yeah. unfortunately beauty is a very judged industry so um you know being able to kind of you know shine when others aren't necessarily expecting you to is also a good thing so do you know what i found as well in the in the beauty and nail industry when i first started out in it it was it was very much very an awful lot of focus on on people being in it being young and pretty and and preened and I think as it's developed, what clients, I, I find that they come into my salon, they say, we come here because it feels comfortable. I don't feel like I'm looked down on. Uh, and I'm like, is that because I didn't put mascara on this morning? <laughs> you know, and it's like, I feel like the industry is, <laughs> the, the customers are looking for something now. They're not, they're not necessarily looking yes. for, for that, that um, air hostess beauty therapy image that was in the 80s, preemed and proper. Oh, looking God, for, yeah. I remember the uniform. I had one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I've had a, quite a few of them in the past, but yeah, I think now. White shoes. <laughs> oh my god! And the blisters that my salon shoes gave me, I would literally the minute I got into class, they'd be off and they'd be under the table. The blisters. And we're expecting people to go in working salons in heels, and I'm like, I can barely work in my salon in my trainers. But I think the industry's moved on. <laughs> people are now looking for us to be a little bit more approachable, a little yeah. bit more. And I think because like everything's becoming a lot more personal even down to nail art so like yeah. they want to be able to have that connection with you as a nail technician to they need you to understand who they are and what they're looking for mm. it's not just about like obviously especially back in the day french maybe a few crystals or a colored nail polish was like yeah. the standard whereas now it's literally right how many crystals can you fit on that nail how much <laughs> 
<laughs> how much intricate nail art. I want a Jim Ross picture on that nail piece, <laughs> and I want there. And, and oh, do you know what? Why not? Let's make some really intricate paisley design on there as well. But I want it in ten different colours. Yeah, and I want it in half an hour because <laughs> I've got to be exactly, and I don't want to pay extra for it. Yeah, and I've got to go do the small <laughs> run. So can you hurry up, please? Yeah, yeah. I, I do feel yeah. it's gone that way. I, I think um because especially with my salon even though there's many of us doing nails we tend to keep our own clients I think we share around if there's we get stuck but people are liking that one-on-one relationship that they have built with yeah. their therapist now whereas in the past like yes. you had the bars in the in the shopping centers and and high street bars where it was so impersonal I remember working in, in yes. one in uh, in Meadow Hall you went years and years and years ago and it was literally like a conveyor belt. And I just thought, this is just not for me. I, I couldn't remember people's names. Uh, I, I liked I liked that connection I have with one-on-one with my clients. It's um, definitely a personal relationship that you have. I mean, you have to be a personable person to be able to do the job because otherwise even things like rebooking, upselling, are just mm. not possible. Like, yeah. you know, if you if, can't if find a, um, a medium to be able to... Um, yeah find that level playing for yeah, yeah, each definitely. other not gonna work and I mean sometimes you will find clients that don't click with you and that's okay yeah. but you know if you're in a situation where you know you constantly don't find that maybe you know changing your um way of, of doing things is probably yeah. a, a good idea but people come they're literally it's like a two hours where they just don't they forget the world yeah and, yeah. They and, and you are that said, yeah making pretty nice and, and we could we joke to the world we talked about that a minute ago when I, when I told you like what, what I'd be asking you and was like 80% of the people who spoke to us said they want to be a counsellor and I'm like well you know we got there then didn't we because that's what we do <laughs> isn't it we are their personal counsellors I joke actually yeah. that oh, it's the other way around I use all my customers as my personal counsellors <laughs> like, but that's I mean you've got the relationship to do it as well yeah. so again that shows you know you're definitely in the right job and they have they'll remember me. stuff for, for you and you'll remember stuff for them and exactly. you know it's a give and take relationship i've saved thousands of pounds in therapy <laughs> <We're back Bargain>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're a mum is it two boys you've yep. got two little boys three and five yeah and they've got chicken pox at the minute haven't they oh, hey. they Can do just in the okay i'll have a look in a minute darling, okay <laughs> And, and, and if not, uh, yeah, if, so how do you find juggling work around? Do you find it's a good industry? I mean, this is something I do ask quite a lot. Sorry. It's a good industry for being parents, being able to juggle around. It care. is. Um, I must say, lately I'm struggling a bit, but I think that's because I'm very much needed on the ground floor. Yeah. Um, and so being in a situation, I'm so sorry, being in a situation where... Um, I've got them at home all the time makes it really difficult because with them having chicken pox, obviously they can't go anywhere. Um, and they're constantly saying fire to stuff. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. They just put fire in the fire pit, so that's great. Um, a bit of toxic and fire, let's do that. Yeah. But um, when like they're at school and nursery and things like that, I do find things. Um, I do find things quite easy. Um, yeah. The only thing I probably do struggle with is that I get momentum and then it's time to do the school run. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I mean, like, you know, I like. Like yeah. see I'm 17 through. now so she's 18 uh, next week so I don't have that issue anymore but I very uh, distinctly remember you just get back and you just get started and you think I'm on a roll I'm gonna get my tasks done today and then the next minute it was like oh I need to go do this full run so yeah, yeah. I do wait what you mean do you do you Let's still <laughs> do you still find that um Oh, it's adorable. I love that. It's like, hug me, mummy. Hug me. Just in case you were wondering what's going on. They're just like, her boys are just trying to hug her and give her affection. And I just think it's so sweet. So, um, I love you. Like, yeah, I love you. It's like, can I do the podcast, mummy? Can I do the podcast? So, um, <laughs> what, what would you think? Um, what would you say to, techn- to people that are starting in the nail industry but that are wanting? That are wanting to know what it's like to run it as like as a mum as a um, as a business person what would your advice be to make it work a bit better my advice would be um don't be afraid because that's the first thing everyone's yeah. gonna be afraid and they're gonna they're almost gonna be restricted with their time and they're gonna think i can only do that two hour appointment or can... don't be afraid because the thing is is that you're you're doing this career to better your life you're yeah. doing it to enhance your life and and you need to embrace that so mm. don't be afraid 
um, make sure that, you know, you make it work for you and your family. Don't, you know, a lot of newer techs, especially, they, they almost feel pressured into things by clients and that's not good. Um, I have difficulty saying well. no. I have difficulty yeah. saying no. Get comfortable with being able to say no. Yes, get comfortable with saying no. Know what you can and can't do. Don't be afraid to push yourself. Yeah. Obviously, just clearly communicate with your client. If you're trying something new, you tell them you're trying something new. Yeah. And you know, make sure that that understanding is there because this is how we learn. We all learn this way. It's yeah. not a you know a one size fits all. Like all of a sudden, that person can paint something really intricate or make that really cool <laughs> shape or like that. Oh hell yeah! And and you know. <laughs> enjoy it that's probably the best thing enjoy it because people get really afraid and when they do their first clients but yeah. you know and that's totally natural we Just hear that a lot that don't we? we we get a lot of people asking you know what's your advice it's gonna be my first client I'm feeling really anxious I don't know what yeah and, and it is just like just go with it just roll with it and if it, if something goes wrong exactly it's like, oh crap that's not gone how I wanted it to go but you know we'll, we'll go again um yeah, I think, and I, I, I think it was Lisa Smith that said to me, because I'm really bad at like um, being, or, I'm so bad at being, or, I'm not organised at all. Yeah, so, so you know, not an organised person decides to do uh, an event-based business, which is a lot of organising. And my husband was like, you can't do this. And I'm like, I'll, I'll muddle through. But she said to me, <laughs> write a list every day of three things you want to get done by the end of that day. If you only no, do two of them, move the one to tomorrow's list. And I, that, that just changed my entire... I, 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 I still love don't, list. I, don't, I still don't do it because I... I oh, but it, at the time it was like, <laughs> this is a revelation, of course. And I'll sometimes be trying to Mind do seven things at once. Yeah. And sometimes I'll be trying to do seven things at once and I'll think, if I'd have just wrote that list, what are the three things? And I'll be sat in the car listing three things that are most important in my head. And I'll be on my way to do something else and think, no, it's actually really far down the list. So I'm going to do that next. I'm going to stop what I'm doing. And I'm going to do that next. And if you have that moment that you think the thing I'm doing right now is less important than something else, stop what you're doing and do that important thing now because you will be so grateful. Yeah, you get such a sense of well-being when you get that really important task done. You know, that that one you've yeah. been procrastinating on. So, yeah. Um so tell me about the acrylic brand because you were mentioning earlier how did the idea for that come along how did you were you like looking for something that wasn't working well obviously I've been in the industry for a very long time um (laughs) well um and I've tried many different brands and and there's some amazing brands out there there really is but I always found that people were like okay well I'm not happy with this hold on a minute I'm not happy with this or I'm not happy with that or is there actually someone at the door? No, it's my children being silly. <laughs> um, so um, so I, I thought to myself, right, okay, I'm going to make a list of things that I as an nail technician would want from a system mm. um, and, you know, see if I can find something that, you know, in the industry already that ticks those boxes. Mm. And I couldn't. So then when I was talking about it with my um, my friend Angela, Angela Charleston, because she, she has, um, she's co-owning the brand with me, she and I were like, okay, well, let's do it ourselves yeah so then we went and, um no, we went on a bit of a two-year journey of, of trying no, different systems no, trying different systems testing them no, trying to find what worked for us no, and there was like literally a list and we kept having to take everything off and and we found um we found a, a lab that creates this product that ticks all the boxes and we were like okay we think we found the one so then because i've got quite a decent sized team we I said to them, I was like, this is a situation. We're looking for people to test it out. Would you mm. be willing to give it a go? Um, and so they were tested. Um, the, the products were tested for 18 months across the UK wow. in salons yeah. under like the guise of no one was allowed to know what the products were yeah. um, because we wanted to see exactly exactly yeah. we wanted to know exactly how it reacted to people we wanted to know if it lifted we wanted to know if it marbled we wanted to know if there was any kind of inconsistencies in the batch colors we wanted to know if the smell was too strong we wanted to know if if um it held its bead you know like when you place a bead yeah. and it actually holds its shape we wanted to know all of that and and we've had nothing but amazing feedback Finley, mummy's on the phone can you just wait please um and just yeah we just found that this worked and and we just it took a long time and we were like do we do it now do we not do we do it now do we not 
and then we just were like okay that's it I think we're ready and it was really scary I really have... scary so like oh my gosh there's so much you know riding on this and yeah. and you know are people going to receive it well are people going to enjoy it are people going to like it um are people going to have problems with it you know like because even though it's been tested you know everyone's different so yeah, yeah you exactly. never know yeah and, and I mean, then we you know got... there is a market for just multiple brands to be out there and as you know yeah. my thought is as long as you are if, as long as you are using a system in its entirety there's no reason why you can't have multiple systems and I know a lot of people say oh I'll just use that powder and liquid but as long as you keep the system intact and you use them properly having multiple systems to meet all your clients needs because not every client is okay with a certain system they will have lifting you're like why is that lifting none of my other clients live so I I, I have one of my um one of my team uses two different systems because on one person specifically yeah. like something can't work so we've got a separate one just for them yeah. and it works really well like, yeah you know for them and I think do what your client needs as long as you're working safely as long as you're working to the manufacturing mm. guidelines and in you know the remits of how you were trained that's not a problem yeah. like you know variety is a spice of life at the end of the day and we're so spoiled for choice in the industry already this Why not? is it I mean gosh there's just so much I mean it, it was my bugbear with the major trade shows that that they weren't highlighting just how much there was out there for nail technicians you'd go to one of the major trade show and there'd be probably four or five stalls and they'd usually all be glitter yeah. and I'm like so where are all these multiple brands where are all these new innovations I'm seeing that I know exist but you know, I'd like I'd like to be able to meet the people that that make them. Yeah, and and knowing like we I've got friends that, that make we brands needed a like this. last year. Yeah, and the the cost is just astronomical. I know, like, and that's the problem. I know, and that's again that's one yeah, of the, the other reasons that when I did Nailtopia, I was like, and it needs to be, it doesn't need to be prohibitively expensive. It, it needs to be able no. to wipe its face. It, it needs to pay for the room and it needs to pay for the advertising. Other than that, it's a day out of my life. Oh. My husband's like, it's not a day out of your life, Rachel. You sit for hours on the phone. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm basically sat on the phone talking to people who are as passionate as me about my industry. So, uh, and do you find that when you're, like, like you say, with the groups, when you're, when you're talking, it doesn't yeah. feel like you're working because you're talking about, the, no. you're talking to people that are passionate, just like you. Oh, that's it. And it's, it's the equivalent of sitting with your friends, having a coffee. Oh, gosh, yeah. But, you know, that's, talking that's about Tom Hardy, yeah, you know, the same passion, the same, you know, we're, we're all talking about the thing we really have a... Absolutely. You know, yeah. There Drooling are things we talk about that don't understand. Yeah. They'll we be got, like, um, we're all like, how oh can we get that excited like, over glitter? And it's like, yeah. don't understand. <laughs> you really don't understand. Yeah, my, my, my husband is actually um, now works with me um, since we bought the Emoki cuticle clothes off Emma. Kalani and he could never understand before and he sits at night now and he reads Scratch magazine every month and he sits at night now searching Facebook pages and searching things online for nails and I know and I'm like he never understood it before and I love sitting there now but watching the telly and I look over and he's he's looking at something and I'm like oh, I've, I've turned that? him I've turned him I've got a, I've got a nail geek in my house finally after 10 years <laughs> oh do you know what i'd love to have that with my other app but you wouldn't have any of it <laughs> right, <laughs> boy. Boy. Come, please. sorry it's all right come, please. Come on. So, um, the uh, Zoom's 40 minutes prohibition, uh, I think of the word, the 40 minutes that uh, Zoom is now insisting on is coming up to an end. Um, so let's talk about what you wanted to be when you were growing up. You said you wanted to be an Egyptologist. Where did that, yes, where, did. Where, where, was that, were you watching Dora Explorer? <laughs> no, do you know what? It's really odd. I, I remember the first time I ever saw anything to do with it. And I was literally going into, you know, when you go from like infant school to primary school, or to middle school to primary school, and you go and do your little tour and everything, and you're about to go into year three, and you're just like, you're afraid because there's all these big heads and everything. And I remember I walked into the um, reception area and there was a huge display and I couldn't read it properly. I, I, I pronounced it Iggy Pitten, but I looked oh. at it, I was like, wow. And from that minute on, I was just obsessed. Yeah. And even now, like I, uh, you know, I've watched the documentaries, I've read all the books, I've been there, I've been inside a pyramid, I've oh, been wow. to the museum in Cairo, and it's just the whole thing for me. Yeah. Um, it is one of my great passions. And Ancient Egypt is one of my great passions. I, I, I that, when you just see anything, it's just so, <laughs> it's so appealing, isn't it? Visually and and the, the intricacies of, of the life and the whatever that they led. So. Um, you ruled it out because 
your mum said you couldn't do it. <laughs> she, I told my daughter she couldn't do yeah. it. Uh, my daughter wanted to be a tiger tamer and she oh. wanted to work in Australia. And I said, a tiger tamer? That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, I said, you can't do it because I, you're not, Australia's not 20 minutes away from me and you're not allowed to go anywhere that's more than 20 minutes away from me. That's probably why your mum vetoed oh, it. <laughs> God, you imagine tiger tamer? That would be a cool job. <laughs> well, she's a lash tech now, so, you know, she's taming something. <laughs> some some lashes definitely need taming, yeah. so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, right, Danny, I, I'm going to let you um, look after the poxy boys and uh, say chicken pox, not that they're poxy. That sounded wrong, didn't it? I'll let you get on with that. No, you're all good. Don't worry. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Um, Thank you for having and, me. It's been and a I pleasure. Can't, I can't wait to bring the trade show to you. <laughs> Buzz in. <Thanks> you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to be able to help where I can. So just Excellent. Don't let me know. Wonderful. Well, don't worry. I've got your number now. You will be being pestered. Yes, you so, do. <laughs> so once again, Danny, thank you very much for joining me. And I will see thank you soon. Thank you, Rachel. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Right, take care. Thank you. Bye. Oh, oh. It cut off. Oh, it cut off. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Nailtopia Inside with the Insiders. If you have enjoyed it, you can show me your support by heading over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Nailtopia, where you can help keep me in Yorkshire Tea and Savvy Bee, enabling me to keep chatting to nail industry insiders with the stories you just need to hear. You can also check out what else Nailtopia is about on both Facebook and Instagram.